I'm sure it. And we're Bedlam! And today, Lan's gonna talk more about tuning. Brilliant. Kayleen's getting a little thing ready here uh, for this episode. Um, we had a few people ask me about how to tune the lute, how do I tune the lute, what are some things to keep in mind. Last week we talked about the, the theory of tuning. Oh, I think you got it. Okay. That's just an A. That's fine. That's exactly what I need. Great. Yeah. Cool. So... Um, there are a couple of things. So last week we talked about mean tone and this tuning system that emphasizes well-tuned uh, sixes and thirds and then slightly out of tune fifths and fourths. And we're going to talk about... Or fourths and fifths. Or fourths and fifths. You know, fifth and fourth, fourths and fifths. Yeah, we'll, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're so professional. Um, now... What I'll talk about is how do we make that happen on the instrument and some of the things uh, that get more complicated when we try to apply a tuning system to something with frets uh, and strings and all of that fun stuff. So first of all, um, you do have to tune, and this is something a lot of people forget, they'll like tune the open strings to six comma mean tone and they won't deal with the frets. Or they'll deal with the frets and they won't deal with the open strings and then they run into all sorts of problems. Um, oh, right. right, very good. So, <laughs> Tell us again about your fret placement and open strings. Okay, so let's go step by step. One thing that would be really, really helpful is to have a reference. So for most people, if I say you should tune your lute to six comma mean tone, they're like, uh... Where do you start with that? Yeah, do you go over to a piano? Well, you can't use a piano. Most pianos are tuned to equal temperament or something really close to equal temperament. Uh, and so that's not going to be a good reference. Can you use your guitar tuner? You can if it's a chromatic tuner, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But I think step one for everyone should be perhaps to just get a cheap little app on your phone. There's one called ClearTune. Uh, and what these apps do is they produce uh, a sound. Uh, you can pick the tuning system and you pick the note and it'll produce a note. Kayleen will play a note so you can hear what it kind of sounds like. There we go. There. So you get a note and that note will uh, be in the tuning system you're looking for, especially if you use a, an app like ClearTune or something like that. So, oh, that's nice. Now let's turn it off. <laughs> so you'll have a reference that you can you can check your notes against so the first thing you're going to want to do is is tune all of your open strings uh to each of the pitches that's produced by that app and, and you use it anyway no okay. yeah you can put the tech away otherwise i'll be like oh let's play video games um i get distracted easily uh so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tune your open strings uh, and make sure that those are accurately in tune with the, the tuning app that you've got. Um, open strings first. Open strings first, okay? And what we're talking about right now is not your daily tuning uh, procedure. This is your setup. So let's say you just got a lute or you had your lute in equal temperament or you've just been sort of, I don't know, figuring it out. This is for the first time, maybe the first couple times that you tune. You'll sit with clear tune and you'll get all of the open strings really, really in tune. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your highest string, your G string, and you're going to make sure that's really in tune. So it's very, very important that you double and you triple check. If you need to use, uh, you know, the, the um, sort of digital tuning feature of clear tune to double check that just really really make sure that that note is where you want it and then what you're going to do is you're going to play each note 
on the neck and you're going to move the fret so that you can produce the sound that the tuning app does. So if you've got your tuning app open and it's producing, say, an A flat in six comma mean tone, you are going to make sure that that fret is moved to where you're getting that sound that you want. You need to do that with each of the frets as you go up. And you Obviously, frets is a big pain, isn't it? Sometimes, yeah, it can. Um, you can stretch them a little bit, and they can wiggle. And what we always have to keep in mind is that tuning is is relative and. Um, being a little off is just going to be kind of part of the game. Um, but once you have all those frets in tune and placed well, then what you're going to do is you're going to go to the second string and you're going to see how many things are still in tune. So you can write it down on a piece of paper. So for example, um, if I'm playing my G and I've got a flat here, great, that's in tune. Now I switch to the second string. I have my perfectly tuned, or second course, the double strings. I have my perfectly tuned Ds, and then I play the E flat. Uh, and what you're gonna realize as you start checking the other strings is some things might be a little bit off. Uh oh. Yeah, because, okay, you perfectly tuned your first string, and you have the frets in all the right places, but, for example, by the time you get down to like that fourth course and you get to the F sharps, there's an interesting thing about F sharps and six comma mean tone. They tend to be flat, whereas A flat tends to be sharp. Uh, and so you run into this problem. You go, well, if my A flat is perfectly in tune, then my F sharps are too sharp. What do I do? You've got a couple options. Can you move your frets up diagonal? Yeah, yeah, that's one. So you can tilt the fret back. Now, that's fine if you're playing a piece that doesn't use the low A flat, right? If you need an octave A flats, you can accidentally push that back. It also can be a little risky to tilt that back. Um, so what you can also do, and you'll see loop players on YouTube, sometimes we'll have a little tiny thread of Tostino uh, underneath, and you can get that installed by a luthier, and you can ask them for it, and that can give you a little mini fret that you have there. Um, just glued on? Just glued on. Yeah, they glue a little little piece of wood or something like that right right underneath the strain, the, the course, and, and that gives you that option. So hypothetically, could you have one for every single note? You could. Uh, and, and, you know, one of the other options, which I've seen some people do, is they'll do double frets, and this is a historical thing, uh, mm -hmm. and vial players do double frets all the time. Um, loop players, it's less common, but we, we know they did it. We see it in iconographic in, in drawings and paintings. Um, and uh, I've seen some people do the double frets and that can allow you to put one fret a little bit this way and angle and it gives you more options. Um, the reason I don't use the double frets is because I'm cheap. That's it. I, I, on a practical level, I just don't like spending a lot of money on gut. I like to wear it out till it falls off. I spin my frets. You'll see I've got my uh, little nubs here have been moved because these started to wear out. So I put a, a fresh piece of gut there. I'm very practical. I don't like spending a whole lot of money. Uh, and, and so I try to, try to save that. So um, one of the things that you're going to have to decide as a loop player is what you're willing to put up with. Like, it's just not going to be possible for every single fret and every single note on your lute to be perfectly in tune all the time. So as you are working on your repertoire, you may need to tilt a fret back or do this. If you've got lots of those F sharps you, and you don't have to worry about an A flat in the bass, you can tilt that fret back to lower that. Boom, done. And then that's sort of fine. And then if you don't have a lot of those F sharps, you can do it. Um, it, it really then becomes a very kind of personal art where you're balancing it because I have never heard a perfectly in tune loop all the way, um, every single fret, every single note. You will have to sort of decide what you're doing. Except for when he's playing. Oh yes, oh yeah, it's always perfectly in tune. <laughs> no, it's mostly, it's mostly like, uh, you know, how many mouse hairs can you put up with in the cookies? Like until it's it's oh. bad. Well, yeah, it's like when you're in a factory, they have an allowable amount of filth in every cookie or can't. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make it gross, but oh. yeah, every okay, never mind. Watch a documentary cool. about it. <laughs> the, the final thing. So uh, on a practical level, for those of you who perform, 
is it's all nice and dandy to be at home and you've got your clear tune app out and you know everything's quiet and you can listen and you can you can tune uh, by ear and you know it, after a while what will happen is you can just tune for example like one of your low G's and then from there tune the outer G's and then you can you can figure out your own way of tuning it by ear and that's a great great practice to do I usually will go G's on the outside and because the D is pretty close to the G I'll tune the fifth there and then I'll check G against my fifth chord C and then I'll check that against third and then the last one I deal with is that fourth chorus. and as long as your frets are still perfectly placed as long as they haven't shifted from where you want them you'll be able to get the tuning you want that's all great at home if you're on stage it can get noisy you might have a, a singer you know warming up or you might have a gamba player who is tuning or something like that and it can be really really difficult to hear so one thing you can do is you can get a little electronic tuner like this and attach it to the the loop and you may be going wait aren't those electronic tuners designed for equal temperament technically they are designed for equal temperament but you can you can crack them you can actually uh figure out ways to do six comma with these things and one of the tricks is you take your clear tune app and you attach this uh, to your phone and you figure out relatively where each pitch is. So for example, if I'm on clear tune and I have six comma mean tone, uh, A is going to be 440, which is the same as equal temperament. So I, I slap my little electronic tuner on there uh, and the note is going to ring and this is going to say it's in tune. Now I'm going to check my G after that. And G in six comma mean tone is going to be a little sharp. And so what's gonna happen is this thing is gonna go, you've got it set at 440, it's gonna go, uh, this, is, this is a little flat uh, when you have it on your clear tone. So what you're going to do is you're going to figure out what level this needs to be in order for it to appear perfectly in tune. So in that case, if you switch this to 441, suddenly you can tune your G there. And you'll find that F is about 442, C is about 441, D is just a little bit under 441. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can figure out the relative tuning to need. And when you're on stage, what I will usually do is I will tune, if it's noisy in particular, I'll tune the fundamental, the lower string. I'll get that really nicely in tune. And then I'll turn the tuner off and I will tune by ear the octave or the unison. And I think it's a really important thing to keep in mind. These things are not um, really great for getting unisons in tune. They're mm -hmm. a little inaccurate. So what you wanna do is just get your reference pitch off the electronic tuner and then tune your unisons and your octaves. Right now I have an octave on the fourth course. What you'll wanna do then is tune those by ear, but make sure you have one that's in tune and then the other one you're tuning against it. And you go from there. Um, so this can save you uh, when you have a noisy ensemble and not a lot of time. Or uh, I had an experience once where I was waiting in a very cold green room and literally walked out into the hall and they put my chair over a heating vent. Oh. And I moved the chair as soon as I realized it, but I sat down to play the lute and like everything was out of tune. And so I went, okay, I'm going to just, I, I popped this on and had it in tune, but was tuning by ear within about four minutes after I had all the fundamentals oh, done. Man. So it's a good thing to have if you're a professional and, and you really need to be in tune in front of audiences. They're not very understanding of uh, lutes being out of tune. Um, so I imagine some people may have specific questions or thoughts on tuning. Everybody kind of has their own way of doing it. Some of you are probably like, I have a better way to tune and it probably is better for you. Um, but I think again, it's something that you'll have to experiment with and find in your sort of your own sound because there is a little bit of freedom there in terms of, uh, what chords are going to be really in tune and whether are going to be a little less. Anything else you think you should talk about? Um, I just keep going back to the mouse hairs. Oh, yeah. Make your cookies at home. You'll still get mouse hairs. Because <laughs> the ingredients, yeah, you have to get the, like, the cookie dough. Like, it's literally everything from the store. No, not yeah. when you make it from scratch. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> what we've learned today is how to tune your loot, uh, sort of, and 
how to avoid mouse droppings in your cookies. Mouse dropping? Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Well, anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions, please put them uh, in the uh, comment section. If I need to do a third uh, tuning video, I know it's a complicated topic. Uh, I probably can, can help people Subscribe out. Subscribe to our channel. Subscribe and like, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Ew. Sorry, you didn't know that? <laughs> yeah, like it's called the, like a lava whole amount of film.